Question 4. 13 marks, 16 minutes. Let's read. The required. Determine if Max is a resident of South Africa in terms of the physical presence test. Show all the requirements and calculations. This is 4.1 and for 6 marks. So immediately we know that we're dealing with uh, residents or non-residents, I should say. And then 4.2, briefly explain the meaning of the term received by in terms of the gross income definition. 4.3, list the requirements of the general deduction formula in terms of Section 11A of the Income Tax Act. The moment you read this question, 4.1, 4.2 and 4.3, you can see clearly that it's three different areas that we're dealing with. Let's go and read the question itself. 4.1. Max is not ordinarily resident in South Africa, but was present in South Africa as follows. It gives you the year of assessment, 2014, and we go backwards all the way down to 2009, and we give you the days um, of you know, his presence in South Africa. So if we look at 4.1, it tells you, determine if Max is a resident of South Africa. Okay. Students, this is very important. If you don't know what is the test or what are the requirements of the physical presence test for a non-resident, you're not going to be able to even answer this question. So before you even attempt this question, you firstly would have had to go through the study unit. You would have had to go through the, um, through the chapter of non-residents. So there are three requirements which you have to know. So what are the requirements um, for the physical presence test? This is a theory question. That's the first thing you need to understand. 4.1 is saying, determine. This is very important. What does the word determine mean? It's telling you, you need to write down stuff. You need to explain to the marker, determine if Max is a resident of South Africa in terms of the physical present test. And we're telling you, to show all the requirements and the calculations for six marks. Now look at, the, look, look at what we've given you in the question. We've told you in 2014, he's here for 93 days, 2013, 94 days, 2012, 98 days, and so forth right up to two, 2009. Okay, let's try and attempt, or let me, uh, let me try and help you answer this question. This is how you would go about answering this. So for 4.1, requirement one. Okay. In order to determine if somebody is a, uh, or, to, or to establish a physical presence test, requirement one is that, is he present uh, in the country uh, in year one for more than uh, 91 days in the current year? Yes or no? If we look at the current year, we are dealing with 2014. How many days is he present in South Africa? We have told you it's 93 days. So is it more than 91 days? Yes. So we're going to write here, the requirement one is more than 91 days in the current year. So you can write here, more than 91 days in the current year. Is it yes or no? Yes. Where did we get that from? We say yes, max is present in South Africa in the 2014 year of assessment for 93 days. Okay, that's requirement one. What is requirement two? Requirement two says that he needs to be more than 91 days in each of the previous five years of assessment. Okay, so if we look at each of the previous five years of assessment, so if this is the previous five years, that's assessment one, uh, year one, and then we look at year two, and we look at year three, we look at year four, and we look at year five. Okay, so if we look at these five years, is he more than 91 days in each of the previous five years of assessment? So I'm going to do it with you on this page, because that's how simple it is. 91 days, yes or no? This is 94 days. 91 days, yes or no? Yes. 91 days, yes or no? Yes. 91 days, 
Yes or no? Yes. 91 days? Yes or no? Yes. Are you with me? Okay. So requirement two is met. So that was requirement one. That was your current year of assessment, which is 2014. I'm just going to go back there. So let's highlight that in orange. So we're happy with requirement two. I'm mean, sorry, that was requirement one. Let's do requirement two in a different color. That was all your, your yellows. Requirement three says, we have to be in total. In total, we have to be more than 915 days in this previous five years of assessment. Okay, so that's your requirement three. So we've met requirement one. We've now met requirement two. Let's look at requirement three now. So if we take a calculator now, and we take those five days, so we take um, five years, so we take 94 plus 98, plus we take 154 days, we take 233 days plus 100 days. It's 679 days. So in these five years, we have 679 days. So he was present 679 days in the five years. Okay? But our requirement three says that he needs to be more than 915 days present. So is requirement three met? No. Because he's not 915 days, not more than 915 days present. He's only 679 days present in South Africa in the previous five years of assessment. Do you agree? Okay. So if I had to show, if you had to show me how you would answer this question, you would then go back and say requirement two. In the previous five years of assessment, he is, uh, requirement two is met because he's uh, more than 91 days in each of those um, years. But then if we go to requirement three, he is only 679 days in total. He needs to be 915, uh, more than 915 days. So Max does not comply with requirement three. And because he doesn't comply with requirement three, although he has complied with requirement one, and requirement two, he does not comply with requirement three, and because of that, he is not a resident of South Africa. And that would then answer question 4.1 of the required. Remember, in a, uh, in a theory question, which is, which is something like this, you cannot just give me the theory, the requirements. You have to apply. You have to give me the theory or give, give, give the markers the theory but then you have to apply it to the question that we've given it to you. So you have to um, give me the theory and say, in terms of the question, this is the scenario, and this is how I apply it, and then come to a conclusion for the markers to be able to give you these marks. Okay, so we're happy with 4.1. Let's go to 4.2. So we've dealt with the non-residence part of the question. Okay. Before I go on to 4.2, I have to say something very important. If you didn't know the requirements of a non-resident, it will be very difficult for you to answer something like this because you will not know the days, you will not know the requirements, and you will not be able to do this mathematical calculation. Okay, now we can go on to 4.2. Briefly explain the meaning of the term receive by. Okay, so again, we're saying briefly, we're asking for you to explain the meaning of a word received by in the gross income definition. So we're telling you, we're guiding you, we're saying it has to do with something of the gross income definition. So you would have to know what is the gross income definition firstly. We're asking you of a component of the gross income definition, the component received by. So what does the term received by mean? It basically means on your own behalf, it's entitlement, it's your own benefit. And that is the, so you have the solution in front of you. And for two marks, that's, that's the answer. Receive by means, in terms of the gross income definition, for your own benefit, own behalf, and entitled to the amount. That's the answer. That's how you would explain it. It's theory. It's, it's retelling me the theory that you know. 4.3. We're asking you to list the requirements so what, what does list mean? It means list in point form, in bullet form, the requirements of the general deduction formula in terms of section 11A of the Income Tax Act. Okay, so we already know we're talking about the general deduction formula. So list the requirements. 
you would have to know what the requirements are of the general deduction formula, which means you would have had to studied the general deduction formula and what the requirements are of the general deduction formula for you to be able to answer a question like this. Remember, these are th th this is a previous um, question that has been asked. So if you don't know the theory behind the general deduction formula, you would not be able to answer this type of question for five marks. Okay, so if you were to go now and answer 4.3, what are the requirements of a general deduction formula? It's for trade purposes, expenditure and losses actually incurred in the year of assessment. It's for in the production of income and it's not of a capital nature. And those are your requirements of a general deduction formula. And that student's answers 4.3. And that is the way you tackle a theory question. I hope you've understood uh, question four and exam technique or you know, the structure in which you answer um, a theory question. I wish you luck in your studies and I hope you contact us if you have any questions. Good luck again and yeah, all the best. Thank you.